Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve implement try, otherwise known as a prefix tree, lead code number 208. So a try, it's pronounced as try as I'm saying it, or sometimes called a prefix tree, is a tree data structure, and it's used to efficiently store and retrieve keys in a data set of strings. So it's for text. Now there are various applications of this data structure, such as autocomplete and spell checker. So it's actually quite useful. Now we need to implement the try class. So hopefully you've seen some object oriented programming this is the constructor. It initializes the try object. There is a void insert, which takes a string word. So void just means it doesn't return anything. So this is going to insert the string word into the try. We have a function that returns a Boolean called search, and that takes a string, which is a word. So that returns true if the string word is in the try, aka that it was inserted before and false otherwise. And then we just have a simpler version of search called starts with, and that takes a string called prefix and that needs to return true if there is a previously inserted string word that has the prefix of prefix and false otherwise. So it means we've already inserted a word that starts with that prefix string. Okay let's visualize a try. So here I'm just drawing basically just the starting point of it saying we have nothing so far. Okay so let's put a string in. So we'll say putting in apple. The letters are going to be the nodes. So we'd have one going over to A and then it would go over to P. We'd have a another P we'd have in L, which I'm going to draw kind of different than those lines there over to an E. And we'll see why in a second. And I'm actually going to draw kind of a period here that's basically just marking that as the end of the word. And the reason for that is because if we had a similar word, we'll just say app, so APP, well, we'd want to make sure that we can have this word in the try as well. And this does not count as it actually being in there already. We do have a word that starts with APP, so that starts with function, but in the this try, we don't actually have this word. So to do that, you basically see that we have A, okay, that's already there. We'd have P, that's already there as well. And then P, that is also there as well, except then we have a bunch of more stuff. So what you'd actually want to do is to basically mark at this level that you also end in a period here, because now it says, okay, we have Apple and we also have app itself. So let's put a different one in here. Maybe we'll call it just ban. That's going to be B from here. It's A and then from here it's n so we have that ending in a period as well so notice that this data structure is very efficient if you wanted to add in the word banana here you're not actually storing all of these letters again we're not storing a full banana we're basically storing it as part of this chain right here and you'd put it over here so this is how we'd add banana and that's going to end in a period so it's going to share as many of those common letters as we can now there's lots of different ways to implement a try one way would be kind of making these actual node objects. So you could make like a class called like a try node or something like that. And it could have, you know, like a value and it could have like a list of children or something kind of the other nodes that it's connected to. But you actually don't need to do any of this if you just use dictionaries in a very clever way. But let's reset this and show how we can do this in code, basically only using nested dictionaries in a clever way. So this is our representation of the try so far, basically just saying that it's empty. But let's put in a simple word here. Let's say that we put in the word of bin. Okay, well, that would represent as B over to I over to N and then ending in a period saying that that's the word. Well, to represent that in our try, it's basically saying that, okay, we have the letter of B and that actually maps over to all of this stuff, which is going to be another dictionary that has the letter of I. And then this I maps over to this stuff. So that's going to be a dictionary that has the letter of N. And then this one is going to map over to this stuff, which is going to be a dictionary that just has that empty word there. So we're just gonna mark that as the period maps over to itself basically. And if you fix up your nested braces here, it looks a little bit ugly. But this is actually how we could represent this try here. So if we put in a new word, which I'll call bind. So if we put bind in here, we could check what we have so far. So we already have B, we already have I and N, except in this level here, we don't have a D. So basically, you could create it like this. So it'd be B, I, N, this would go over to D, which would then go over to just the period. And we'd modify the dictionary like this, we're at the level of N. Well, this actually, it still has this end of word here. So we still have bin, but then we're also going to have here the key of D and that's actually going to map over to a dictionary that also ends that word. That's going to be thrown into this level right here saying B to I to N to D to the end of the string. And that's how you can store these words here. 
Okay, so that's basically how you would insert words into your try. Now to search for a string, basically what you would do is go through the characters of it. So we'll say searching for binded. So do we have that string? Well, you see we have B and then we have I and then we have N and then we have D. But at this next level here, you'd basically be trying to see if we have E, but that's not in this dictionary here. So that would return false. If you were looking for the word of just bind, well, then you would get over here and you'd see, okay, we have everything matched so far. But since you're at the end of the word here, you're particularly looking for bind, you would need to make sure that you actually had this period thing at the end. Because if you didn't, then you would have been in the situation where you had something like binded, which would have been represented by that, but you don't actually have bind. So you'd want to return false in that case. And prefix is honestly just a little bit easier and simpler version of search. If you wanted to know if a word had the prefix of bin, well, basically, you would just need to make sure that it has all of those letters. So B, E, I, and N, and you'd return true because we have that. If you were searching for something like, well, to see bind, well, you'd see we have B, then I, then N, but we don't have E, and so you'd return false there. Okay, so let's check out the code for this. I think it's really, really cool. Okay, so in our constructor, we want to store an empty dictionary. So that's the representation of our try so far. Now to insert a word, well, we would need a reference to our try. So we'll just call that D for dictionary is equal to self.try. And then we would go through the letters of the word. So for each C in the word, if that character C is not in the dictionary D, that means that we haven't seen that letter in this location before. So our dictionary D at that character is going to equal an empty dictionary. So if we haven't seen that character C before, we will make a new dictionary where we map our current character over to that. And then the trick here is to set D equal to D at C. And at the end of this loop, we set D at the period equal to a period. So this definitely needs some explaining. So let's take a look at this. We get D is the try. Then for each character that we have in the word, if we haven't seen that character in our current dictionary, then we're going to create a new spot for it. So so we'd map our current dictionary at that character to a dictionary, which basically says we've seen that character now. Now, otherwise, if this character is in the dictionary, well, then we already have a dictionary for it. And so D at C already exists. There's really nothing to do there because in both situations, you're just trying to keep getting your nested dictionaries. So we'll just set D equal to D at C, which you can think as just getting more nested. Then at the end, our dictionary D is always going to be the most nested possible. You need to add in that you have this as a key value pair. That marks that you have that particular word. Okay, that might take some getting used to, but just think about that. So for search, we'll again get D is equal to our self.try. For each character C that's in the word, if the character C is not in the dictionary, well, then that just means we can return false. We were looking for a certain character, a part of the word, and it wasn't there. So we can return false. But if it was in there, so if C was a character in this, well, it's going to map over to another dictionary. And so you could get that D, your more nested dictionary, is equal to D at C. Now, after you go through this loop here, it's very similar to the insert function, except instead of actually setting this to be a word, you need to make sure that you're actually at the end. You need to make sure that you actually have that word. And that means you would need to return that that period string is actually in that most nested dictionary. Basically, if this passes here and goes through, it means you have all of those letters so far, but do you actually have that particular word. And so you need to make sure that you've stamped you have that particular word. Now it starts with is very, very similar to search. In fact, I'm going to just copy and paste it and change two things. This is going to be the letters in the prefix. And here it's going to just be return true. Because if you've gone through all of the characters in the prefix and you never encountered an issue, okay, so we got through this loop, that means that all of those characters were actually existent in our try. And that's exactly what the starts with function wants. You've inserted a word already that has that prefix. And so you can just return true here. Okay, so let's get these all on one page here. If you are to submit this, then that's going to work. It's consistently very, very fast and very low memory because we precisely store only exactly the letters necessary. So I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was and have a great day. Bye-bye.